Okay, it being seven o'clock, I'd like to call the Planning Advisory Community meeting for Tuesday, February 9th uh, to order. Uh, please note that uh, Councillor Wang is not with us this evening. Are there, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? There being none, can I have a mover and seconder, please, for the adoption of the agenda? Uh, uh, before I do that, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No? Mover and seconder, please, for the adoption of the agenda. Uh, Scott and Oliver. Uh, no delegations. Uh, can I have a mover and seconder, please, for the adoption of the January 12th meeting? Uh, count, oh, jeepers, I almost said Councillor Tom. Uh, Mayor Beckett and Councillor Jacob. A little bit more formal. All right, just give me a second here while I get this second computer figured out. All right, sorry, can I get a mover and seconder please for item 8.1 and 8.2 reports of committee of planning and other boards? Uh, Scotty and uh, Tom, uh, any uh, comments, questions, concern with the building and septic uh, department report of January? All in favor of receiving his information? Carried. Uh, comments, questions, concerns about 8.2 Committee of Adjustment meeting minutes for November 30th. Are we using the same mover and seconder? Yes, please. Yep. All in favor of receiving this information? Carried. Mover and seconder, please, for item 9.1, Hydro One, Hydro One Wood Pole Replacement. Councillor Jacob, Councillor Broom. Questions, comments? No. All in favor of receiving his information? Carried. I got out and now I don't know if I can get back into this. There we go. Ooh, look at me go. <laughs> All right, mover and seconder, please, for 11.1, .1, application for minor variance, Stacy D. Robertson, uh, Councillor Jacob, Councillor Broom. Uh, Bruce, anything of interest uh, that you have not stated in your report already? Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, nothing uh, in addition to my report. I'd, I can just go over the, the the end part there. So they did, the minor variance is to reduce the setback that's required to a waste disposal site. And in this case, the property actually had two waste disposal sites in the vicinity, the existing, uh, like the current uh, landfill that is in use right now. But then there's also a old inactive site. I think it was closed in the seventies off the top of my head. Uh, that uh, was also sort of close to, actually closer to the where the proposed property is and where they want to have that reduced setback to. So in accordance with the official plan, they did have a study prepared to look at uh, these two landfill sites to make sure that uh, that there's not going to have any impacts for putting a dwelling there, making sure that any future water supply is not affected or that there's other adverse effects from gases and other things uh, to make sure that a uh, house can be safely built there. So the report went through the one for the current, like the ongoing site, the, the municipal site, and found that it's far enough away that the landfill site won't have any impacts on the building of a residential dwelling in this location. Uh, but the problem we found with the, the report was based on the closed site, which is actually closer to the, where they want to put the house. So the, the policy says, you know, the, they should ensure, is the, the, the test, that you want to ensure that dwelling will not have any won't be adversely affected. And so for the other, like the site that was closed in 1970, they made a bunch of assumptions based on uh, where the existing landfill site is and didn't do any uh, really form, they just made assumptions and tried to make assumptions and then said that, you know, if all these assumptions are correct, then 
overall the the proposed dwelling should have an adequate potable supply and should be okay but that's not really quite the bar that we're trying to set when we're looking at uh, uh, a future house going in here and the safety of a future future resident of the McNabbury site so the recommend staff recommendation is that uh, the application actually be approved uh, a condition we put that prior to the issuance of a building permit that they actually go and will drill a well on the property. Uh, they can drill it where they want to build the house so that uh, you know they, you're not just wasting a well and that that well be drilled and then a sample be provided to the township that's been then done in, in accordance with the mystery guidelines that clears the water says that uh, that proves that the water is clean and is suitable for uh, long-term use for a future dwelling and that that report be provided to the township. So we're still recommending that it be approved, but just taking it one step further and just making sure before you get, actually get the, uh, the approval for the dwelling, that the, that the well go in first and a clean water sample will be provided to the township before a dwelling is placed in that location. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Excellent, thank you, Bruce. Uh, any comments or questions, concerns with this one from council? Or excuse me, members of the committee. Councillor uh, Broom. I'm just, you know, even though it was closed in the 70s, it can, if I'm not correct, or if I'm correct, Bruce, it, it can leach up to 100 years. Um, so it hasn't leached yet, but what's saying that it won't leach in another 15 years? Is there any way that we can say that, you know, um, we've, we've given recommendations not to like I'm just how to protect the township a little more. The only way to do it more would be to have drilled uh, to make sure they know where they where the water full or exactly where the groundwater is going. So any leachate will obviously go with the ground ground uh, groundwater. That, they sort of put that in their assessment saying, you know, based on some of the things that they were assuming, saying, you know, uh, like the sites aren't, I think they're about 500 meters away, like the, the old site from the current site. So the, if the groundwater in that location was moving the same as the, where the, the two, if the two sites have the same groundwater movement, then it should be okay because the leachate should be going away from this property. If, if it did have any leachate, it would be going away but it's a should and groundwater as you know, for everybody who was, inv was involved in the uh, the Miller Quarry site, we know that groundwater is not very, cons can have a significant change from uh, one property to the next property and that there's not a, a guarantee that the groundwater will all be moving in the same direction. Uh, so that's why we said, okay, ideally the water should be moving in this location. We accept, you know, sort of accept it should be going in that location, but just having a, a actual drilled well, I think would provide the township with its uh, with enough information to be confident that the future landowner would be uh, protected from it instead of requiring a full drilling program because a full drilling program will probably be cost more than, uh, than, than the property. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor of the recommendation? Carried. Sorry, I think that's it, but I want to get down to the bottom. I can't. I should have bought my daughter a better computer. <laughs> it's not user friendly. <laughs> I okay. So my apologies. Oh, it is the end. Um, here we go. Do we have any members of the public with us, uh, Lindsay? No. No. I can read lips. Thanks. Uh, in that case. Uh, meetings and so we can adjourn the meeting thanks very much everyone